people who are left behind. So we're going to go to hadith number 22, which we have started it, but we need to give more benefits to it. So please start, Dr. Saeed, with also dating the class. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Nahmaduhu, Wanusili Allah Rasulihil Kareem, Amma Bad. Tonight is 15th lesson on the book, um, Riyadu Salihin. Uh, we're in the chapter of repentance, chapter number two, and we will um, continue with the hadith number 22, and that is in the English translation uh, in page 46. And tonight is um, uh, tonight is 20th of Shawwal, 1442, and still is 31st of May, 2021. Shukran. A woman from the tribe of Juhayna came to Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when she was pregnant from zina, adultery, and said to him, O Messenger of Allah, I have committed an offense liable to had, the prescribed punishment, so exact the execution of the sentence. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called her guardian and said to him, Treat her kindly, bring her to me after the delivery of the child. That man complied with the orders, at last, the Prophet ﷺ commanded to carry out the sentence. Her clothes were secured around her, and she was stoned to death. The Prophet actually, actually, the Prophet ﷺ commanded her to secure the clothes onto her. That's the translation. Naam. Um, and the Prophet ﷺ led her funeral prayers, and Umar who submitted, O Messenger of Allah, she committed zina, and you have performed a funeral prayer for her? He وسلم, replied, Verily, she made repentance, which would suffice for 70 of the people of Al Medina if it is divided among them. Can there be any higher degree of repentance than that? She sacrificed her life voluntarily to win the pleasure of Allah the Exalted. Oh, Collected Muslim. in Mukh Muslim. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. As we know that this is a. <laughs> An amazing story of a person who wants to repent, not just the repentance that we do when we make a sin, we just say, I repent to Allah. This is a person who knows the consequences of his repentance is going to be stoned to death. And yet he would go ahead and would repent and would face the punishment of Allah and taking it as justice in order to purify himself. This took place before with Ma'iz ibn Malik. Now this is al ghamidiyah or here she's called from Juhayna, and Juhayna is actually, she's the woman, as we're gonna explain, she is al ghamidiya herself. She came to the Prophet of Allah, and there are plenty of hadith regarding this, one of says narrations, which is one of the narrations says that, uh, you're not gonna return me back as you have returned back Ma'iz, for verily I am pregnant from the fornication. So Ma'iz ibn Malik, he was returned four times by the Prophet of Allah, because Prophet of Allah wants to make sure that he had done it, and also, as the scholars had said, the Prophet of Allah is encouraging him to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repenting to Allah is better than asking for the prescribed punishment to be taken upon yourself. Because when you repent to Allah azza wa jal, you give yourself an opportunity to make good deeds and also expiate sins. So she said to the Prophet of Allah, verily, I am pregnant from the zina. That means there's no way to return me back. This is the master of confession. Then also the Prophet in one of the narration, he said, woe to you, wayhaki, wayhaki, woe to you. Go back, seek forgiveness for Allah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this, we could see that the Prophet وسلم, is telling us repentance is better. And he's like telling her, don't confess. For valid confession would bring you a punishment like this. Not only that, we find uh, a story which is made authentic with our Sheikh Al-Albani, Al-Irwa, Al-Ghalil, where he says the story of Shuraha Al-Hamadaniya, where she was uh, admitted to Ali ibn Abi Talib, and Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said to her, he was the Khalifa at that time. Is somebody reading something? Or? A 
still could read some. Somebody's reading something, Ikhwan. The person is reading, can you just read lowly because we are really teaching here. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah fiqh. Waylaki, woe to you. La'alla rajulan waqa'a alayki. Maybe, if you want to recite, you recite upstairs. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah fiqh. This is disturbance now. <laughs> Waylaki, woe to you. Maybe a man had maybe forced you for the zina. She said, no, I've done the fornication. Maybe you've been pushed. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And she still wants. Then he had to go ahead. And also the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Tolerate this prescribed punishment amongst you. Uh, unless it's going to be reaching me. Because the Prophet of Allah is the head, the state. He is the a chief, he is the Amir, he is the president. So if it reaches me, I have to implement it. But before that, so if somebody who deserves, for example, to be lashed for or flogged because of uh, 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 basically he had made defamation or flogged because of drinking wine or he has to be killed and stoned to death because of fornication and adultery, it's better for him to repent. And that is the hadith, don't raise this matter to that president, but once it reaches the president, he has to implement it. And that is why al makhzumiyyah the woman who had stolen at the time of the Prophet of Allah when he had uh, repossessed Mecca, al makhzumiyyah she, what she did, so she borrowed an item, and then when the people wanted to take back the item, this, she said, well, it's not for you, it's a stealing. Because of that, her matter, she was, it was raised to the Prophet ﷺ. When it was right to the Prophet of Allah, he has to amputate her hand. But before that, she could have, well, she could have uh, kept herself for the tawbah, but they raised her to the Prophet of Allah. And also, the, the, the Prophet Sallallahu he had Usam ibn Zayd pleading with him, Messenger of Allah, she is and she is and she is. And she said, Atashfa'u fi haddin min hududillah. Are you going to intercede regarding a prescribed punishment which Allah had imposed upon us if somebody does such a crime? That this is really not good. You could do that before, but once it reached me, I have to implement it. Wa aymullah, by Allah. If Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, is to steal, I will cut off her hand. Her hand. Now we find the, the the fruits that we read from this hadith. Number one, that the believer is always exposed to fitna. He's exposed to make sin. So whenever he makes sin, he will race to repentance. That's the believer, the true believer. Soon as he races to the sin, he would race straight away. What? to the repentance. As soon as he falls into haram, he will start asking Allah, please for, and everybody does haram. Haram from haram, it, it varies, but it is a haram. Number two, we could find that prescribed punishment has to be deterrence here. It's not we are asking to implement it. It's a deterrence. If we have now a thief or burglary, a punishment of cutting off the hand, I think you will leave your car open without even locking it up. Why? Because you know that he's not going to dare to go and steal from your car. Because they know that the prescribed punishment is amputation. So we know for a fact that prescribed punishment as a deterrence. Number three, that is the person who has his punishment in the dunya from the prescribed punishment, he will not be punished in the hereafter. Who said that? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He said, verily, man fa'ala shay'an min dhalik. If any person had done such a thing and he's been punished because of it, then he, it is his expiation. So it will be just in the dunya and in the akhirah he will be exempted from any punishment. But if you did not have the prescribed punishment and you repented to Allah, then on the day of resurrection Allah might forgive you and he is the oft merciful, oft forgiving. Also that we could see here that the Prophet of Allah, he told her because she's pregnant to go back, to go back. Why? Because the fornication punishment, which is death, cannot be implemented upon a woman whom she is pregnant, who is going to kill the baby. So he told her to go with a person. So he asked for her wali. Wali, close person to her. He said to her, or said to him, Ahsin ilayha. Be good to her. What does that mean? That is, protect her from those people. They're going to say, what a fornicator you are. Or might spit on her face because she's a fornicator. Protect her. Look after her. Until she what? She delivers the baby. So this is from the mercy of the Prophet ﷺ that he had said 
to her wali to go and look after her, protect her until she comes back and delivers the baby. And look at this. She has nine months now to deliver the baby, whatever it is, eight months, to go back. Still, she went back to the Prophet ﷺ, went back, and she asked the Prophet Allah to be purified. And she even brought the baby with, uh, when, she, when, when she brought him, she said, he even asked her to go and nurse him. And then after that, she brought the baby with a piece of bread. Now, also, we could see here that the Prophet of Allah, he had offered a prayer on her. He prayed the janazah on her despite she was a fornicator. And this is to show us that if any person had prescribed punishment on him and resulted in his death, like here, pelting with stone, then the, this is because of her repentance. Then the people of Salah, the people of righteousness, like the Prophet of Allah, he offered the prayer on her. It is in contrast with somebody who is an innovator known to be a billah, a troublemaker. If he is to die, then the people who are known to be sheikhs, they should not pray on him. To be the deterrence for others. If you do like this, you're going to end up deserted by the people whom you are in need of their dua. Also, we find a narration here. In this, which is an extra narration, where the Prophet of Allah, he commanded for a pit to be dug to her, like a ditch, like a hole. And it is up to her chest, it was. Why is that? So that she will not be exposed. In contrast with Ma'az, Ma'az, they pelted him, stoned him, while he's what? Standing, okay, in front without any hole. That's why he ran off. But the woman, he dug a hole. He commanded for a hole to be dug where her chest is covered in case she's going to be stoned and her clothes will be exposed. So this is from the mercy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In that narration, Khalid ibn Walid, he took a stone, he hit her with it, he stuck her head, or tuck her, it, it struck her head, and some blood gushed onto her, uh, onto him, and he started insulting her. So the Prophet of Allah said, take it easy Khalid. For verily she repented a repentance, that even if to be a tax collector, to repent it, he will be accepted. And that repentance will be accepted. So. The Prophet Sallallahu he buried her and he also prayed upon her. It shows us from this narration as well that the tax collectors having a big sin, just like as big as what? Adultery. Why? Because he's always asking people unlawfully. He's always asked, making zulm to the people's money and taking their money without a due right. Also, we find here that the Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an Asking the Prophet of Allah, Messenger of Allah, are you praying on her? This is not to deny upon the Prophet. It's not like, what are you doing on the Prophet? Why are you praying on her? It's like, why is it that you're praying on her? So he wants to learn, so he wants to find out why he is praying on her. And also, the one who stoned her, it, not including the Prophet of Allah, so it is not compulsory for the leader, for the president, for the khalifa, for the king to be present when pelting of the stone or implementing prescribed punishment takes place. Because the Prophet of Allah, he was not there. So it is in contrast to the Hanafi madhab, Hanafi madhab, he had to be there. But here we can see the Prophet of Allah, so I said he was not there. Also we find that the implementation of the Zani, which is the Muhsan, the one who is married before, who is married and that is, he commits fornication, or call it adultery, then his penalty is death by stoning. So the man will be dug for him, the man, the, sorry, the woman will be dug for her, as for the man it will not, and it is not a sword. He will not be killed by a sword, okay? Uh, uh, you would say, for example, well, don't you think that the sword would be easier on him or on her if she's an adultery? And also the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if you kill, make sure you are easy in the kill. Even when you kill the animal, slaughter him, slaughter him in an easy way. So how can it be now for the human being? Because, you know, for any person who's not a Muslim, for that is a barbaric way of what? Punishment. It's like stoning. So uh, first of all, we say, when the Prophet of Allah, Ahsinu Dhibha, be nice when you kill. Al-Ihsan, nice, is according to the Sharia. Whatever Islam says, that's the good, that's the ihsan. So the ihsan, for example, when we slaughter the animal of the sheep, we slaughter it where we sharpen the knife and we take it away from the sheep. We don't show the sheep the knife. In contrast to those people who are calling this punishment to be barbaric, what do they do when they slaughter their animals? They shock with electric 
and that's another pain, and then they slaughter. Whereas the, we are Muslim, we follow the Sharia. Number two, this is an Islamic state would implement such a punishment, which is what the prescribed punishment. This is an Islamic state would do that. And if a Muslim state would do this, so how can we justify for the people regarding the stoning? Not only that, the scholars, they said, the stoning should be not be with big, massive stones. Should be with small size or medium size. Why is that? Because big stones will kill him straight away. He has to, just like he was, tasting the pleasure of fornication while he's married, he has to taste the punishment likewise. Just like he was in pleasure while he was doing the haram, this is why Islam created for him or made for him a punishment to taste the punishment slowly. So big stones are not allowed. That's why the companions have just any stones when they stone the person who is committing the fornication. Uh, Islam tells us as well, justice and regarding, for example, a person killed another person. But if he killed him, just like that, then he will be killed straight away. But what about if he mutilated him? So before he killed him, he cut his nose, he cut his fingers, he cut his feet, then after that, he killed him. Islam, they will not give him the penalty, penalty of death. They will do the qisas first. So the finger with the finger, the nose with the nose, the hand with the hand, and then after that, they will kill him. It has, this is the justice. This is the ihsan. Because if a person can mutilate, and then he kills the person, Islamically speaking, that if he can do that, and he says in his mind, it doesn't matter, they will kill me. No, you're going to taste the same thing that you have made to that person who you killed with no due right. Also, we could find here that it is permissible for the person to confess upon himself that he had done the zina in order to be punished and purified. He's not allowed to go and tell people about the fornication or the bad sin that he had done for the sake of boasting. Prophet of Allah, he said, Kullu ummati mu'afa. All my ummah is to be secured. Kullu ummati, they're going to be safe on the day of resurrection. Except al-mujahireen, the one who boasts about the sin. How? They make the sin during the night and he sleeps while Allah covers for him. Nobody knows. The following day, he will go to such and such person. You know, yesterday I did such and such thing. I drank, I fornicated, I did this, this. After Allah covered for him, he takes off the cover. That's the one which will not be safe on the day of resurrection. Also, we find here that a tawbah, tajubu maqabla. Repentance will remove everything before it. Khalas. Allah will accept the repentance. That woman, she repented, Allah accepted her repentance. Seventy people, if they to make sin, all of these sins, if that woman had the repentance of that for the 70, it will be enough. That means this repentance would suffice 70 sinners, 70 people from the Medina. And we see that the Prophet of Allah said that the one who repents from his sin is like he hasn't sinned. Now, we ask the, uh, inshallah, the doctor to go the following hadith. <clears throat> hadith number 23. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu and Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu reported, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, if a son of Adam were to own a valley full of gold, he would desire to have two. Nothing can fill his mouth except the earth of the grave, and Allah turns with mercy to him who turns to him in repentance. Bukhari and Muslim. Oh, well, this hadith basically tells us that, number one, the son of Adam is being chipped uh, to love the money. I mean, don't say that you don't love money. Everybody loves the money. That's being chipped into you. Okay? You like to have more money. And that's why he said, that is, the son of Adam, it has to be a valley of gold. He would wish for not just another valley, no, two uh, separate valleys. Another, the valley of gold, is, the valley of gold is enough for you to live, but no, 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 it's not enough. He wants another two valleys. But the, the interpretation could be another valley to be added or extra two valleys. Another hadith, if he has two valleys, of, <laughs> he wants a third one. So he's never been satisfied. So we find from this as a benefit, that is a criticism for those who collect money for themselves and also being keen to make sure collecting the money. Uh, because you see, you know these people collecting a lot of money, they're always stingy. Isn't it true? They are stingy, they don't give. You'll find the people who give are the poor people. 
for the charities. So, by the way, it's getting really warm here. If uh, Sheikh, you want something here or a fan or whatever, Jazakallah khair, Oh, you could open the window. Allah is khair, Sheikh. Uh, so the, we, we, we could find here that the person is being chipped to love the money, which will uh, entail that he will be a person who is stingy. So this is a criticism for that. And this also tells us that the person loves to have the money all the way until he dies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا Also he said, وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا And you love the money so preciously. And in, the people are also If the good touches him, he will prevent it. إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ Except for those who pray. Now, collecting the money halal way and also paying what is the due right of that money, that's not criticized. Just like we have entailed in the hadith number six of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this hadith accept the repentance who repents from those criticized uh, characters. طيب. He says here, Nothing will fill up the mouth of the son of Adam except for what? The Turab. Turab means the dirt and means the death. That means he will stay keen to collect money until he dies. And he will stay wishing for more money until he dies. Until the dirt fills up his mouth in his grave. And Allah will repent upon who repents. That means he will accept the repentance of the person. Uh, of the person who is keen to uh, collect the money, just like he will accept the repentance from others. 24, please. Hadith 24. Um, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah the exalted smiles at two men. One of them killed the other and both will enter Jannah. The first is killed by the other while he is fighting in the cause of Allah, and thereafter Allah will turn in mercy to the second and guide him to accept Islam, and then he dies as shaheed and martyr as well, fighting in the cause of Allah. Could you explain the first word he said? Yadhakullah, Allah smiles. It says, Allah the exalted smiles at okay. two men. Jazakallah. Bukhari and Muslim. Barakallah. This hadith where the author, Imam Nawawi, had sealed his chapter of the Tawbah with this hadith because he's telling us that the person, he should repent from his sin regardless how big it is and he should not be in despair from the mercy of Allah. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي the one who say to, to my slave, say to them, to my slave, الذين, they have transgressed against themselves. Do not be in despair from the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah, Allah will forgive all the sins. This hadith tells us that Allah smiles. I'm going to talk about that. When a person who's a Catholic kills another person who's a Muslim. So the Muslim is a shaheed, martyr. He goes to Jannah. And this kafir, Allah accepts his repentance, he becomes a Muslim. And this Muslim also, or the person who had embraced Islam, will also fight and will be a shaheed and he will enter paradise, subhanallah. So in the day of resurrection, in the Jannah, they will have no hatred. Both of them killed one of them, killed the other, yet they will love one another. So what we need from this, number one, is that the affirmation of the character, the attribute, smiling. Allah smiles. This is from the characters of the actions of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it is being mentioned only in the Sunnah. There's no mentioning of it in the Quran. And that doesn't matter. For us, the Sunnah can establish the hujjah, the proof. So we don't need to have everything in the Quran. So this character or this attribute is only being mentioned in the Sunnah. And there is no... Uh, you could say something that to be warned against or to be worried about when we affirm such an attribute. Because the people who are uh, uh, not upon the sunnah and deviated, they say, no, here the smile means the reward, means Allah's acceptance, means Allah's pleased. But they negate the attribute itself, which is the smile. As for Ahl-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah, 
the people of the follow the Salaf. We say that Allah spoke to us with the most eloquent speech, and He does not want to deviate us. And when He said He smiles, we affirm that He smiles. Uh, we do not go like you, you deviated people, whether it's the Asha'ir, whether it is the Jahmi or the Mu'tazir. We say that He smiles, a smile suitable to His Majesty. So we know what is a smile. But for them, they said no smile. Smiles means pleasure here. Why? Because smiles means that you're a person you are, you know, very light in your heart, or you are, you are, you know, like you're not, you're not serious. Uh, and smiling it means that you have, you know, like a face being pulled this way, uh, and you need to have as well, maybe as well, a tongue, or you have to have a. Why should we do that? Why? Why do we have to go like this? Who amongst you, when I say, the leg of the table, jumps his mind that the leg of the table has got a knee, and a toe, and a skin. And a hair, nobody except for the crazy person. The leg of the table, suitable to the table. And the table is created thing. And we are here seeing a difference between the leg of the human and the leg of the table. And both of them called legs. Yet, we can't see the difference as well between the leg of a created thing. Sorry, the foot of the created thing and the foot of Allah. Subhanallah. The foot of Allah suitable to his majesty. We don't know how does it look like. Once you say how, you got into the bid'ah. No how. There is a how, but we don't say how. How is the bid'ah. Don't say how. Allah, he is the majestic. Allah, he smiles according to his majesty. And we absolve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be looking like anything of his creation. Wa huwa sami'u al-basir. He's the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Number two, we should not be in despair of the mercy of Allah. For verily Islam would he uh, expiates whatever comes before it. So if a person embraces Islam, everything is done before, even including he killed a Muslim. He killed a Muslim in the war. Even that it will be as well a repented and accepted and will be as well pardoned. Also we find here in the hadith that it is incumbent and it is a duty upon the person to repent from his sin regardless how big it is. And also we can see here that being a shaheed in the sake of Allah and jihad, it will entail Jannah, regardless of what you have done before. Because this person killed a Muslim, and he embraced Islam, and he made a shaheed as well. Um, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is amazed? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smiled? Okay? The smiling that they were two enemies in the dunya. Then they became brothers in the Jannah. There were two enemies, one killed the other, and yet... In Jannah, they were what? Two brothers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍ إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُورٍ مُتَقَابِلٍ We have, before you enter Jannah, any hatred you had towards your brother who deserved to be in the Jannah, it will be removed. So when you go to Jannah, there will be no envy. In Jannah, there will be no grudge. In Jannah, there will be no hatred. In Jannah, there will be nothing would make you to not to be subtle or happy. Everything will be, mashaAllah, the best thing that you want. We ask Allah to make us to enter Jannah, inshaAllah. Mm -hmm. And when they enter Jannah, both of them, it doesn't mean that they are equal in their ranks as well. So if the, both of them enter Jannah, it doesn't mean that the one who is being killed by him is going to be the same rank as the one who is what? Who had killed him and repented. It could be the one who had killed him and repented above him in rank. Or it could be below him. It could be equal. So it doesn't mean that they are together in Jannah. It doesn't mean that they're the same rank in Jannah. We're coming to the chapter of patience now. Fadl. Chapter 3. Patience and perseverance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sabiru wa sabiru. Which means? Surah Al-Imran verse 200. Translated in English. O oh, you who believe, endure and be more patient. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ In Surah Al-Baqarah verse 155, translated in English, And certainly we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives and fruits, but give glad tidings to a sabirun, the patient. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ so Zumar verse number 10 in English, 
Only those who are patient shall receive their reward in full without reckoning. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِمَنْ صَبَرَ وَغَفَرْ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَمِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Surah Shura, uh, verse number 43, translation in the English. And verily, whoever shows patience and forgives, that would truly be from the things recommended by Allah. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ista'inu bis-sabri was-salah, inna allaha ma'a sabirin And that's in Surah Al-Baqarah 153, translation in English, Seek help in patience and as-salah, the prayer. Truly, Allah is with us, Sabirun, the patient. Last verse. That's in Surah Muhammad, verse number 31 in English. And surely we shall try you till we test you those who strive hard for the cause of Allah and Sabirun, the patient. And then he starts with the hadith. So we're going to just explain as an introduction and then we're going to go ahead with the hadith, inshallah, next uh, week. First of all, the chapter of patience. Patience. What is patience? And what is the person should be patient about? That's what we're going to be discussed. First of all, patience is something no one can live without it. You have to be patient in all your circumstances. The reason behind this is whatever you face is either something which is good or something which is not good. Something which is to do with ni'mah, blessings, ni'am, or something to do with niqam, that is something to do with something was gonna harm you, hurt you, you don't like it, okay? So it's either of the two. And in both cases, the person is in need to be patient. Whether he is in prosperity, is to be patient, not to go off tangent, not to go from the straight path, because so many people, when they have lots of money, they will go away from the deen. So to be patient. And also those people who are facing Aqdarullah, crisis and all of that, they might lose as well the plot because his death of his parents, for example, and then he will lose a religion. You have to be patient. So what is patience? Patience is basically restraining yourself, locking yourself onto, number one, the obedience of Allah. Number two, not to indulge into the sin against of Allah. Number three, and that is being patient regarding the Aqdarullah, that is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I repeat them again. So patience, that is, you have to restrain yourself onto the obedience of Allah. I will explain inshallah. And also not to indulge in sinning against Allah. And thirdly, and that is to be patient regarding the decree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees upon you. And it is compulsory in kitab wa sunnah wal ijma' in the Quran, in the sunnah and the ijma'. Let's talk about patience regarding that is obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, obeying Allah azza wa jalla, like praying, like paying the zakah, like making hajj, like making umrah, like fasting the Ramadan, all of those acts, they are heavy on you and they want to fulfill them. You are abstaining from food and drink from the morning dawn until sunset. That's something, you know, you, you are pushing yourself to do it. And yourself likes to eat food all the time. Same thing, exerting, you know, effort to go all the way to Hajj. So all of this obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of them require not just yourself, it is your wealth. You have to spend from your money, from your precious money on to Hajj. So you need to be patient on fulfilling that. As for the patience not to sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, your soul is being chipped to command you with bad. <inaudible> Very the soul is being made to command you to do evil. So he would, it would tell you, go and fornicate, go and drink, go and womanize, go and, you know, uh, watch haram. So, <inaudible> go and eat, devour the wealth of the people, make zulm, drink wine. So you are being, now this patience is only when this comes in, it is a patience. So when this is pushing you, you are patient, I'm not going to go into the haram. The third one is to be patient regarding the decree of Allah. And most of the verses in the Quran, they talk about the third part, which is the patience regarding the crisis, the calamities that befalls the person. So he will not show 
For example, this person, he will not show fear as soon as he, and he loses the plot as soon as something happens to him. Okay? So uh, this should not be faced. And the people regarding this last one, which has been patience, regarding the decree of Allah are of four cases. Case number one, which you shouldn't do it, and that is you are feeling angry. When the Qadr of Allah comes to you, he's saying, why is it me? Why you pick on me? Why, 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 why is it all the time I'm being tested? Why I'm being, being punished? Why, why, why? So you are basically showing uh, unsettlement. You're not satisfied, whether in the heart, whether in the tongue, whether in the limbs, whether in the heart. So your heart is you know, feeling that Allah made zulm upon you. Billah. Allah has made you zulm upon you when he's testing you because of this calamity. Or with the tongue. So you say with the tongue, uh, woe to me, what is happening to me? And you start, woe to the time. And, you say, and he who does insult the time is like insulting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or into the limbs, he start striking his cheek. You've seen people who are striking their cheek or pull their hair or, you know, or, or, or you do things like Allah Shakul Jiyub, pulling the hair, all of that is to be uh, uh, haram. Uh, so these people had deprived themselves from the reward. Not only that, they have indulged themselves into the sin. So it will be a woe unto them in this dunya and a woe to them in the hereafter. And this is not allowed. So this is the first case when somebody goes into calamity, people either they will show this I'm being unpleased, whether in the heart or the tongue or the limbs. Second case where the people they do, which is patience. Patience, we said, is compulsory. What is patience here? That he is hating what happened to him, the death of, somebody, of, of his relative. He hates it, but he doesn't say anything. He doesn't feel anything. He doesn't do anything with his limbs. So basically he hates it, but he is patient. He did not show anything that would displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet he hates what taking place to him. Okay? That's called patience and you have to do it. Third case. Pleased with it. You are satisfied with it. And this is not compulsory according to the correct opinion of the scholars. Because there's a difference among the scholars. And that is to be pleased with it. It's not just you are uh, being patient. But you are patient and plus. What is the plus here is that you know that this crisis, this calamity came from whom? From Allah. If Allah wants good to you, regardless whether it's calamity or prosperity, amazing, remarkable is the case of the believer. And that is in Asabatu Sarra, if he's in calamity, sorry, in prosperity, shakar, he will express his gratitude. It will be good for him. And if his calamity befalls him, he would suffer, endure it patiently, and that's good for him. And this is exclusively for the believer, nobody else. The believer. And that is to be pleased. Because the source of this crisis is Allah. So his heart is open for that, and he pleases, he's accepting it, just like he hasn't been struck with a calamity. Khalas. And that's recommended. Mustahab. But the fourth stage is the best. What is it? You thank Allah for it. You thank Allah for it. It's not you just please, but you say, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. And that's the Prophet who used to say it. Praise be to Allah regardless of the case. Alhamdulillah. So you're praising Allah, not just being pleased, praising Allah for it. Allahu Akbar. He's saying, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. He is the one whom is being praised for even something which is not good for you. Nobody, nobody would be praised if he did something bad to you, except for whom? For Allah. If Allah imposed upon you something bad, you still praise him. And that's the top rank. Prophet Sallallahu he said in a hadith, and I believe it's a hadith of Israel Khudri, when, the Prophet came, when he came to the Prophet and he was in his deathbed, and he had this fever. And, the, and, and he was saying, Messenger of Allah, and he made dua. He said, it is us, the, um, yani this is the case for the believers, for the anbiya, for the prophets. Trials, disease will be doubled, and the reward will be multiplied as well. Then he talks about 
that who's the one who's going to take the most of the calamities? قال يبتلى الأمثل فالأمثل The person who is closer to Allah, he will get more calamities to be tested. Then he talks about those people who is having the highest rank. قال and those people وقال يبتلى الصالحون those righteous people وإن أحدهم لا يفرح بالبلاء كما يفرح أحدكم بالرخاء and these people will be happy with the calamity. Alhamdulillah. Just like you are happy with what? With your laptop when you receive it as a gift. Huh? You receive a gift, a car. Oh, I love it. They say that when this calamity comes with them, I love it. But please hear yeah, there is something very delicate. You have to understand it. This will separate between the Salafi and the Sufi. What is that? Here these people are happy, but they're not asking for it. When that Sufi say, oh Lord, strike us with a calamity so we could express our thankful. No. Don't wish for meeting the enemies. But when you're struck with it, you say, Alhamdulillah. But don't ask for it. Because if you ask for it, do you know you're going to be patient? You're going to be holding your feet onto Islam? You don't know. So what's one when they entered the Prophet Sallam on a man? And he was, you know, like a, a chick. Like a chick. Bones and only the skin. There's no meat. And he's got fever. So he said to him, Messenger of Allah, what are you making as a dua? He said, oh Lord, whatever you want to punish me in the hereafter, make it now in the dunya. <laughs> so the Prophet said, are you going to be capable of taking this punishment? Are you going to be capable of taking this punishment in the dunya? No. Ask him for afiyah. For to be in health. Don't ask him for that. Whatever you're going to be punishing me in the hereafter, punish me now. No, you don't, you don't know if you're going to hold your feet into Islam. You don't know. So don't wish. Just thank Allah, whatever you're on. Somebody passed by Al Miqdad. Muqdad ibn Aswad, the companion, radiallahu anhu. And he's from the ear of the followers. He said, Tuba li hayatayn al Whoa, mashaAllah, these two eyes of yours. Because they have seen what? The Prophet Al Miqdadi got so annoyed. He said, to him, Why some of you want to wish to be in a time and in a place where Allah saved him from that and he doesn't know what's going to happen to him? For verily, at the time of the Prophet of Allah, people who saw the Prophet of Allah and disbelieved in him because of the pressure, the pressure of the people, community. Look at Talib. Because of that, and Allah made them to be born to there in hellfire on their faces. So you should be thanking Allah that you are in what you are in. You're saying, La ilaha illallah, and no one is what? Punishing you. Al Miqdal was, you can't say La ilaha illallah that time openly. He can't pray openly. So you are now in an era of the followers, at the time of Abu Bakr, the time of Umar, the time of MashaAllah. You're praying and saying, I'm a Muslim. You, could, you cannot dare to say I'm a Muslim at that time. So don't wish for something that you don't know where you're going to behave with. You say Alhamdulillah, what you are in Alhamdulillah. Right. Here we come to Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu Isbiru Here isbiru that means regarding the going into the sin. That means isbiru be patient not to indulge into the sin. Don't do it. Okay. And this only takes place when your nafs, your soul asks you, fornicate. Do haram, uh, uh, watch something haram, or for example, drink haram, womenize haram, then you be patient. Sabiru. Sabiru, that means be patient on doing what? The obedience. So, isbiru, don't indulge in the haram. Sabiru, it means be patient regarding the act of obedience which one is higher in rank out of the three patience on making the act of ibadah or patience of not indulging to the sin patience regarding the calamity which one do you think is the one that is the top patience yalla from the audience what do you think which one ha huh? ha huh? calamities ha huh? calamities ha huh? sins ha huh? Obedience. Obedience is the correct. Patience to do the ta. Because it involves two things. Involves number one, you are 
abiding yourself to do it, abiding yourself to make the salah, abiding yourself to make the zakah, abiding yourself to make the... And number two, being patient of the... You don't like it. Yourself doesn't like it. Yourself doesn't like to be abiding to be... So you're being patient of two sides. To abide yourself and also to be patient regarding the heavy of this ibadah. So the ibadah, being patient, is the top rank. Then after that, it, it varies which one is the other one, but the ibadah is the top one because it involves two things. So, wasabiru, isbiru, upon the sin. Sabiru, and that is to do the ta'a. And the third one, and that's why we say, for example, from the ta'a is jihad. Jihad, to make it, you need what? A lot of patience. Because you're going to be what? Meeting your enemies. So now the prayer is no problem, but when it comes to jihad, you don't want to, you want to hide. You don't want to be sniped huh, with a sniper. Okay? So it is, that's why it's a top. Third one, warabitu. Rabitu means increase of good. That means keep good followed by a good. Followed by a good. So it's, it's called continuity, continuity of good. That's the al-murabata. Al-ribat. Warabitu. Prophet he said, three things from the mukaffirat. They are the expiators. One, isbagul wudu al makari To make wudu in the times of difficulty. Number two, and that is, what? Kathratul khuta ila al masajid. And that is making traversing paces to where? To the masjid. Third one, and that is, no, intidaru salati ba'da salah. To wait from the prayer to the what? To the other prayer. فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ Three times he said. So a ribat here, scholar said, which is refers to the three or to the last one? Is it to the ribat, to the making wudu in the times of difficulty when it's cold and it is when you traverse in paces to the masjid or is it just to the last one? The correct opinion is the last one. A ribat, which is are you making good and you're waiting to make another one? Good. So you continuity of good. This is called Allah encompasses all of that. All of that. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ فَلَاح فَلَاح in this dunya and فَلَاح in the akhirah. And the فَلَاح, what is it? You attain what you want and you save yourself from what you dread. Again, فَلَاح, it means you attain what you want and you save from what you dread. You attain what you want, what is that? Jannah. And you say for me, what you read, what is that? Halfa. That's the falah. What taqo Allah alaikum tuflihum. Second ayah. When the Rabbil wanna kubi shay imin al khawfi wal jur, when aqsi min al amwali wal amfusi, what the marat wa bashir sabirim. This is from uh, an oath from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qasamu min Allah azza wa jal. What time is the prayer, by the way? The ma'a 45, yes? Jazakallah khir. You look sleepy, Absalim. <laughs> Tahir. Allah makes an oath. I'm going to test you. We're going to test you. Some of the fear. Some, not all. Because if it's all, you've had it. Some of the fear. Then he says, and by the way, khawf is the opposite of safety. And there's two types of khawf. Khawf, from the, and that is, um, we call it, uh, and khawf from the outside, and khawf from the inside. Khawf from the outside, an enemy, something like this, okay? And khawf from the inside, khawf from the sins, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here Allah, he put the khawf before the what? The hunger. We're going to test you with fear and then what? Hunger. So he came what first what? Fear. So why? Because the person who is scared, he's not settled. Put a sheep healthy. Or I'll tell you, sorry. put a sheep which is not healthy, sick, and put some food. Okay? After five, six days, sheep will get healthy and start eating what? The food. Put a healthy sheep and food and put there in the middle a wolf. This sheep, even if it's healthy, she will die out of what? Our fear. Scared. 
He would rather die. So she will not go to the food. So when you are not in security, you can't do anything. And the Prophet ﷺ also had explained this. He said, if, if somebody, أَحَدُكُمْ آمِنًا فِي سِرْبِهِ Secured in his neighborhood. مُعَافًا فِي بَدَنِهِ Healthy in his body. عِنْدَهُ قُوتُ يَوْمِهِ He's got the food of his day. فَكَأَنَّمَا حِزَتْ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا بِحَدَافِهِ It's like he had possessed the whole dunya. Dunya is yours. So he started with what? Safety. If you are to wake up secured, your security, when you're secure, you could go to work, you're not scared that somebody's going to open the door on you to your wife and rape your wife. Okay? Security. Even as a talent leader, أخي. even if you have a talent leader, at least you have a law. Because if there's no leader, it'd be chaos. People killing one another, people stealing one another, people raping one another. So the fear started, the fear. And then after that, the illness of the body, this, huh? if you are safe in your body, healthy in your body, then the third one is what? The food. You got the food of the day. It's like you have the whole dunya under your fingers. Subhanallah. Just these three things. So the khawf is greater an impact on the person than the hunger. Um, the, the khawf from the inside is the khawf from Allah subhanahu And this is the one that everybody should be scared because it is the reason behind all types of punishment, whether in the dunya, in the akhirah. In the akhirah, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِشْتَ Sorry, in the dunya. In the dunya. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِشْتَ ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّي لِمِنْ حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرَةً to the end of the verses. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he says, that وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ He who is keeping away from my dhikr, is indulging to sins, then will he have an agonizing life. That's in the dunya. As in the akhirah, we have فَأَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ we destroyed them as an out, a result of their sins. We have these two are in Surah Al-Anfal and Surah Al-An'am. In Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَأَغْرَقْنَا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ And we have made Al Fir'aun to be what? Drown. As in Surah Al-An'am, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْ كَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ مِنْ قَرْنٍ مَكَّنَّا لَهُمْ كَمَا مَكَّنْ مَا لَمْ نُمَكِّنْ لَكُمْ Can they see, O oh Muhammad, that we had uh, uh, destroyed so many people before you which we have given them empowering in the land which we did not give to you to you here is Quraysh مَا لَمْ نُمَكِّنْ لَكُمْ وَأَرْسَلْنَا السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِذْرَارًا And we sent the rain in abundance onto them. قَالْ وَجَعَلْنَا الْأَنْهَارَ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهِمْ And we made the rivers to run underneath them. فَأَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ بِذُنُوبِهِمْ We destroyed them because of the what? Because of the sins. وَأَنْشَأْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ فَرْمَنَ الْأَخَرِينَ We say in Arabic, Uh, the woman who is free, chaste, she will rather be hungry not to go and eat with her breast. Thadyayn mean breast. What does that mean by fornication? By, so she will not sell herself. To, you know, why? Because she's scared from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She would rather die of hunger, but not to use fornication and prostitution for giving what? Taking money. Any chaste woman. And that is why even if they are kuffar, when the Prophet of Allah repossessed Mecca, and he took the pledge from the women of Quraysh, one of them is Hind, the wife of Abu Sufyan. So the Prophet ﷺ, he had given them the pledge, وَأَلَّا تَزْنِي And they don't what? Fornication. What does him say? Subhanallah, the free woman makes fornication. She would make prostitution. Even they are mushrikeen, adultery, adulterous, adult, um, idolatrous, but yet they will not accept such a thing. No way. This is for prostitute, not for the free woman. So the woman, free woman, she would rather die of hunger, but not to what? To sell herself and sell her body. And then he says, Al-Ju'a. 
Al-Ju'a. Al-Ju'a is a normal Jew. You're hungry. But you could be in a certain time where you are ill and you can't eat. Have you seen that? Some people die. Why? Because they can't eat. Subhanallah. Allah will strike you with that. So, قَالْ وَنَقْصِمْ الْأَمْوَالِ And financially, you're going to be stripped. Allah will test you. والأنفس. People will die close to you. Lots of people die these days with this pandemic. We lost lots of uncles and brothers and friends. Okay? والثمارات. Fruit. It's not to do with hunger now. No, the fruit will go no barakah. You'll find fruits, but the peach does not peaches. Huh? The plums does not place plums. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And give glad tidings to the one who are what? Patient. We'll stop here, inshallah. And we will go for the question, and then we'll explain the following two verses. Bi'idhanillah. Uh, any questions from the, uh, as well, from the uh, broadcasting, please send us to us. Jazakallah khairan. Any question from you? We'll start from you, Bidin Lat. Fadal ya <laughs> Don't worry about your wife, yeah? <laughs> there will be no, no jealousy whatsoever. She will be jealousy now. The wife is jealous already. And the jealousy is already now. Even the, even the jealousy is from the virgins of paradise now from the wives. The wives who are to the righteous people, of course. So when the righteous person has got a wife and this wife, she's harming him, those virgins of paradise would say, he's just with you temporarily. He's about to go to us. <laughs> he's with you temporarily. Is about to go to us. So they are as well up, jealous from her. But if she want to be good, she want to go to enter paradise, she want to do what? Obey her husband. If she doesn't, that's it. She, she's not going to. And that's why the Prophet said, any person who has got a bad wife and he does not divorce her, Allah will not fulfill his supplication. He will not fulfill his supplication. So sometimes the divorce becomes what? Compulsory. It's not just recommended or hatred. No, 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 no. Compulsory. No. Have you noticed something? I want to just remember when I saw you. That I cannot say to you, brothers get together. <laughs> like I used to do before. Every time there's a class, get together, brothers. I can't say that to you. Inshallah, one day we'll be able to say it. Tfadal. Well, I said that I got light in here that properly. So, oh, yeah, the hadith I mentioned. Oh, you know, I heard that. I heard the word Dawood. That's what, what is Dawood? <laughs> okay. Uh, meaning it's not forgiven. I didn't say that. Every, all my ummah is to be safe, I said. Safe. Safe here means, yani, on the day of resurrection, your sins more likely to be expiated or to be forgiven. Oh, yes. No, no, completely wipe it out. So the poor woman, she is making a sin. Regarding the barrage or not the barrage, making a sin. And a man making a sin. And he dies. Would he be forgiven? Well, if he repented to Allah before he dies, and his repentance is, is accepted, but let me finish. So either this person is repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then if his repentance being done according to the condition, then Allah will accept his repentance, then he will be forgiven. If he is a Muslim wahid, he did not repent, he made a sin, then on the day of resurrection, he is under the will of Allah. So this is qa'idat al-wa'di wal wa'id. Principles called al-wa'd means promise. And al-wa'id means what? Threat. Allah will fulfill his promise, but Allah did not promise to fulfill his what? 
his threat. Again, Allah will fulfill his what? His promise. But Allah did not promise he will fulfill his what? His threat. His threat he might, he, because sabaqat rahmati ghadabi. My mercy had preceded my anger. So you could be forgiven regardless of what you have done except for shirk. Shirk will not be forgiven. Even the minor. But it will not take you outside the fold of Islam. Some scholars said even the minor will be forgiven. But the minor, you might be, as Sheikh Islam said, he said, you will be punished for it. But the major one, that will take you outside the fold of Islam. Of course, there are prevention. Uh, um, we call it like something would prevent you from being able to the fire, which is jahl. If you are ignorant, you didn't have people to teach you. Even it's a major sin, even it's shirk, you didn't do it. You, are, you, you didn't do it out of knowledge. You had nobody to tell you about it. You will be forgiven for that. Qairatul Jahl. Naam. al bil Jahl. To give excuse with, uh, with, for ignorance. That's a qaida principle. Naam. Again, yourself. Tfaddal. Uncle, can you hear? Can you hear us, uncle? Do you have a question, uncle? No question. Tay. <laughs> The person who had killed is a kafir. The good question. He killed the Muslim. Is there any qisas on him? Yes, there is. What is the proof? The proof is the woman who had put the poison to the Prophet ﷺ and was with him Ibn Ma'roor, Al Barab Ibn Ma'roor. He had taken some from that poison meat. Where he took one morsel, the second one, he said, this leg is telling me, this shoulder, sorry, telling me it's being poisoned. Did he poison it? They said, yes. Why? To test you. You are a prophet, Allah will tell you. If you're not a prophet, we'll get rid of you. They were, she was truthful. <laughs> so Prophet said, he pardoned her. But the guy, the, the other companion, what? Died. So it was said that there was qasas. The family asked for him to be killed. Ask for her to be killed. Zainab, her name. The wife of Mishkem, the Jewish. She was Jewish. But she embraced Islam. Yet she was what? Killed. As a qisas. Now. Fadl. And, and by the way, here there's something, you ask me for qisas, but that's, that's a battle. Okay, there is no qisas. Remember that. Do you understand? You're asking me for Qisas, yes. But this story talks about what? Fighting. Fighting is not Qisas. Because we're in war. <laughs> so there's a due uh, right for him to kill you because you are, he believes that you are a, you know, an apostate. Just like you believe he's an apostate. See? That's the difference. Fadali Abdullah. A person is, you know, his sin is beating him up. That's like the fear. You're gonna, Allah is gonna punish me. That's the person who will be repenting all the time. That's the fear I'm talking about. Salim, that's the masjid, by the way. Shara? Hey, I'm with the shara. Qarayy minan. The short ajat? Allah? Mushkil kida. شوف الصعيدة يا عمي شوف الصعيدة مرة الله يحفظك هذا خد فوتبول ولا ايش هذا for the people who are watching there's a noise outside it's like the street is fighting outside الحمد لله الذي عافانا من بتلاكم به وفضلنا كثير من خلق تفضيلا الحمد لله this is Allah, Allah Jal gave us the blessings that we are listening to Qala Allah, Qala Rasuluh, and these people listening to all bad words and obscenity. Is that outside here, Falima? Zakallah khair. There's nobody upstairs? Abdullah, can you just go on upstairs for uh, Omar? Maybe the, there's nobody questions there. I'm sure there's questions there now. A, a 
one of the family members for giving. If any one of the heirs, let's say that you killed a person who was a father of five people, four of them, they wanted the death penalty, the qisas, the retaliation, and the one it is not khalas, it has to be blood money. And if one of them is not old enough, he's beyond, below the age of puberty, then the qisas will not take place until he grows up and he takes his decision as well. The question was, uh, here Prophet Haslam forgave her, Zainab, the, the Jewish woman who poisoned uh, the, the companions and Prophet Haslam, but the, still the Qasas took place. But that, that, so, that's different from your question, Dr. Said, come and think. They said that she, she killed two, okay. Okay, so <laughs> uh, if it is two, two people, it... So but this, is, the, this is, the bara is not really related to the Prophet Haslam. These are the heirs, these are the rights. So somebody yeah. is being killed, the right goes not to his friends. Okay. It goes to the what? The heirs, the heirs, the one who is like his sons uh, or, or his father if he's alive. He is the one. So his sons will take over or the father. Father is the heirs. The aqila, it's called the aqila. These are the ones who will command for him to be killed. If the sons said no, one of them said no, khalas. But a friend of his, mm. if he killed two, so each one will, so he will be saved from this maybe, and the other one what? Okay. So she was saved from the Prophet of Allah. He didn't pardon her, but... The other one, they said the family, they wanted to kill her. Yeah. But she was, she was good. And there was, I mean, she was a good woman and she embraced Islam. And that's what the story says. As I said, there's more than one authentic story, uh, an authentic story regarding Wallahu Ta'ala Alam. Some say that she did not embrace Islam, but 